So you don't have to vote on anything. All right. You gonna flip the page? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you happen to be, um, uh, we've got a, a fairly light agenda this week, so maybe we can get it done quickly. And then, of course, we have the Hackfest next week in LA. So be sure to get your last minute changes to the agenda um, listed. Uh, we will count the we will cancel the TSC meeting on Thursday because I think people will be traveling, um, and uh, and so we'll be back at it in two weeks. Um, I don't know, Todd. Is there anything else from a Hackfest planning perspective that you need to remind people of? Yeah, I think uh, the only things are for the day zero training. If there are any folks from uh, Borough, Aroha, or Quilt that'll be there that can do. Um, quick overviews on that and then help folks set up their dev environments um, in the afternoon. Please let us know. Uh, otherwise, we've got a lot of topics slotted in there. Uh, any other things that people would like to see, please get uh, that dropped into the Google Doc. And we're going to form up the agenda a little bit more in advance than we have in the past. Uh, that's one of the requests we've heard from folks. Um, otherwise, everything's moving as is and we have uh, a lot of people registered for this. So we're excited. Excellent. Excellent. And how about the internship program? Again, that was very successful last year, so looking yep. for another. Uh, let me just drop the link in there into uh, <coughs> Rocket Chat. Uh, I think the big thing on the internship program is Call for Mentors is open right now. That will close Friday of next week, so we will continue to remind everyone, if you're interested in mentoring an intern, please get that submitted ASAP. Uh, last year, we had twice the number of people request to be mentors than we had funding for. So um, we've expanded the program this year, but please get your interest submitted there. Excellent. So I am just looking for the link on the work group updates here, charter template. Uh, so for the work, uh, the work group updates, I think, uh, and Tracy, maybe you want to chime in, but I think that was all approved to move forward. Um, yes, I think at I'm this just point looking is... for the link because that has the schedule. Yep. Uh, and I don't see it in the wiki, so um, we may not update. I know it's in the wiki, I just it's not linked in the main page. The, the schedule has not been updated yet. We're still waiting on the IT folks here at the Linux Foundation to uh, make sure that the template is in place for uh, any new files or uh, wiki pages, I guess, that are being created. So once that gets done, then I'll reach out to uh, Ram and, and make sure that, um, you know, he has like a couple weeks to, to set that up and then we'll get those uh, rolling on the schedule. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yep. All right. So. Uh, then we're up to uh, <clears throat> composer update. So who's doing that? Is that Simon or Caroline? Uh, Simon's here. Hi, Simon. Hey. Uh, shall I share my screen? Go through the document. Uh, you could do that, and I think it'd be good if somebody would paste the link into Rocket Chat if they haven't already done that. The trouble with doing Rocket Chat and Go to Meeting is finding the different pages because go to meeting is such a uh, on that note we're going to be moving over to zoom uh starting for the next meeting so that should oh, cool. solve some issues but that one stinks too because it just takes <laughs> well these all these tools they want to take over your entire screen and so if you use multiple screens and stuff yep. it doesn't work because it just keeps following you around and you can't toggle between different different tools it's annoying Zoom is better than GoToMeeting, but that's that's for sure. <clears throat> okay, Simon, you're up. All right, right. Uh, so Project Health first. Um, we've been continuing to deliver week re weekly releases of uh, Composer, and those releases include new features and bug fixes. Um, and we pushed a new one out uh, about an hour or so ago as well. Um, so we're we're definitely keeping 
keeping uh, releases up to date and giving new functionality to end users on a regular basis, which is really good. Um, we're getting a lot of bugs raised in our uh, GitHub repository. Um, hopefully not a sign of bad quality, but we are picking them up and turning them around quickly. Um, so that, that's good to see. Uh, we're seeing a continued significant amount of uh, interaction on Rocket Chat and Stack Overflow um, with people posting questions and problems that they're hitting. Um, and we're turning those around quickly as well. Um, we've recently seen over the last three months, I think quite a lot more people starting to contribute to the project, um, which has been really nice. Um, most, most of these are quite small contributions, like fixing typos or adding a few little bits of docs, but um, it, it, it's good to see more people coming along and starting to contribute. Uh, we don't have any issues to report to the TSC at this time. Um, again, we've been delivering weekly releases. If you want to go through our release notes and find out what, what's in each one, then you can just go to the GitHub page. Um, all the releases are posted there. Um, over the last quarter, um, we see very little uh, in interactions on the mailing list. Um, most of the mailing list posts tend to be me posting out the re uh, release information. Um, there's a couple of questions on there, but very little. Um, and most of it is on Rocket Chat and Stack Overflow, uh, along with GitHub issues. Although sometimes GitHub issues really aren't suitable for the kind of questions being asked. Sometimes we'll get asked, uh, how do I do this uh, kind of thing on GitHub? And then, then we sort of try and push people over to Stack Overflow or Rocket Chat for asking questions instead. Um, because of the amount of questions we are getting on Rocket Chat and Stack Overflow, we have to uh, team members within IBM, at least dedicated to answering the questions on Rocket Chat and Stack Overflow and keeping them going. And um, that's Paul Mahoney and Rob Patcher, and they do a great job of um, quickly turning around all questions and dragging in uh, various developers as needed to help out. Um, but one of the other nice things we're starting to see is that when those guys aren't around to answer questions, the community are jumping in and answering questions as well. So they'll be like, community members helping each other out on Rocket Chat, which has been really nice to see. Um, and that, that's also a recent, recent new trend. Good. Um, and we're definitely good at uh, commenting on GitHub issues as well in a timely manner. Um, uh, as I said, we've been pushing out regular releases. Um, some of the new big features that we pushed out recently are um, around business network cards. Um, a business network card is something we introduced a while ago. Um, which is sort of an easy way to pass around information about how to connect to a blockchain network and the credentials that you use for connecting to that blockchain network, so the digital certificates. And we started off doing that in the Playground, our web-based tool, um, and now we've finished it so you can use business network cards uh, in all of the Composer um, tools, uh, the command line and the APIs and the REST server. Um, we've delivered support for Hyperledger Fabric 1.1, um, and thanks to the Fabric team for delivering that, um, because it, it delivers, a, uh, delivers us a really key feature, which is Node.js chain code support, which means for once we can run natively, uh, because Composer is completely JavaScript, uh, before we were running it in a Go JavaScript interpreter called the duct tape. Uh, it was pretty slow, it had a load of back level language, it was missing a load of the new language features rather, um, and now we can run natively within Node.js. And this gives us support for the latest language features in Composer transaction processor functions, which has gone down pretty well with the community. It allows us to use cool things like async await, um, which makes the business logic that's being encoded into transaction processor functions much more easy to read and understand. Um, any questions so far before I continue? Uh, this is Vivian, I have two. Sure. One is, one is. Uh, do you have any plans at all to support any other DLT other than Fabric? Because if I understand it correctly, uh, when Composer was first brought on, that was touted as a possibility. Um, or is it pretty much narrowly focused on uh, on Fabric? Uh, so Composer has been designed from the start to be portable to other DLTs, um, and if other D DLTs have JavaScript support, 
then it's definitely possible. Um, I know I've, I've spoken with the Sawtooth guys about that. Um, they have the ability to write JavaScript smart contracts, so getting Composer running there would be a definite possibility. Um, as for other DLTs, not sure. It sort of depends on whether they support JavaScript or not. But Compose, as I said, Composer is designed to be completely open um, and portable to other DLTs. I don't think uh, my team here are intending to do that work, but we're happy to work with other people to do that work and provide help and guidance and whatever docs we can we can give you. Uh, that's great. So that that obviously means there's no, um, uh, you know, there is no like a plan to get to get this done. It has to be done if there is uh, support from other members of the community. So the second question has to do with your JavaScript um, JavaScript compatibility. You mentioned especially the async wait. Um, so these kind of things, are, are you uh, at all worried about any kind of stopping problem there or you're not, um, you know, because some of the other, like Ethereum, for example, which have uh, sort of JavaScript uh, support have uh, gas, which limits uh, the runaway code. Uh, you. I mean, are you guys thinking of having any kind of uh, ways in which you can uh, limit those kind of negative interactions? Um, I'm not saying that that could be solely due to malicious code, but also due to uh, bugs. Yeah, um, no, it is, it is something we're very interested in. Um, before, with the previous JavaScript, runtime we were using, we were very limited in what we can do um, because it, it was a non-standard JavaScript platform. It didn't have any way of plugging in additional functionality. Uh, and we, we sort of weren't too worried about looking at ways of fixing it because we knew where we wanted to go. We wanted to get to Node.js. Node.js has lots of uh, either built-in capabilities or external third-party modules that allow you to do things like limit the time a function takes to execute. So we, we could start looking at ways to solve those kind of problems, um, introducing time limits for transaction execution. Uh, but it's not something we've looked at yet. Thank you. Boris? Totally unrelated questions. Um, you mentioned uh, GitHub issues, and I'm curious what your experience is like with GitHub issues and, and whether you're using JIRA, uh, and this would be in the context of, I think we had a discussion last week about uh, JIRA and security issues and, and trying to get all the projects onto JIRA. Um, so uh, we all love GitHub issues. Um, we'd really be opposed to moving to JIRA. Um, it's a bit overcomplicated. I think, um, and it's nice to have the code and the issues all in one place. Um, that, that would be my opinion on it. I'd, I'd really rather stick with just GitHub. Um, and I think that's sort of the familiar experience for most like, open source developers these days. Okay, thanks for that, uh, that feedback. Okay, I'll carry on. Um, so what are our current plans? Um, we're starting to work, work towards a version of Composer that we would be happy as calling a 1.0. Uh, and this is mostly in part due to the fact we can now run natively in Node.js. Um, before, with the weird JavaScript interpreter we were using, we were pretty, we were not very confident about people running that in production. Um, a, it was slow. Um, B, it wasn't really widely supported. Um, it had a very small contributor team, um, and it certainly didn't have the whole backing of the Node.js ecosystem. So we're, we're much happier now we've got that. Um, but there's a, a set of features that we're looking at working on um, now that will help us get there as well. Um, I'll, I'll just go through these quickly. Uh, um, today, uh, in transaction processor functions, there is no ability to access external modules. So one of the power of 
Node.js is the ability to go to npm and grab any of the 500,000 modules that have been published there and pull them in and use them in your code. You can't do that in Composer today. You can do it in uh, Fabric, and, and so, so we'd like to support that in Composer, and that's now made possible because we have the Node.js runtime environment. Um, in order to, the next one is uh, what we call native Fabric deployment, um, and this is because of, because of the weird JavaScript runtime we had before, we sort of deployed Composer business networks in a very unusual way. Um, where we deployed a generic piece of Composer code that we, we build and everyone uses, um, and then we gave it the BNA which gets stored on the blockchain. And this sort of doesn't really work with the Fabric governance model, um, where everyone is meant to install the smart contract uh, and then at that point they can sort of approve uh, approve it and then everyone agrees to stand that smart contract up. So we're trying to fix that and actually deploy to Fabric in a way that Fabric would uh, expect us to. Um, we're looking at the generation, um, so Composer has some functionality for doing complex queries. Uh, in Composer you can store assets and participants on the blockchain. Um, when you store them in ArchDB, uh, you can do complex queries. Someone's talking. Oh, all gone. Thanks. Uh, so when you store them in CouchDB, um, you can do complex queries over those. However, those complex queries require that you um, create CouchDB indexes. Otherwise, the queries are quite slow. The indexes make them fast. Um, and because we have the models in Composer that describe all of the data that gets stored in CouchDB, we can generate those indexes for you. So we're building some tools to both generate those indexes and automatically create them for you so you don't have to worry about that and you just instantly get performant queries. Um, we have a, an application generator that allows you to generate an Angular web application um, just by running uh, Yeoman and answering some questions. Um, and I've sort of been beating it up, beating up on it for the past year or so because it looks both pretty ugly and is pretty uh, incomplete in terms of the features. Um, it only shows you assets and all of the other parts of your Composer business network. Um, and so we're going to finish it off and give it some good amount of design love as well to make the generated app look nice. Um, and on a similar note, we're looking at our vehicle lifecycle demo, um, which is the demo you will have seen me present um, if you've seen me present before. Um, and we're 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 not happy with it at the moment because it's quite complicated. Uh, it uses a very complicated model. Uh, it's quite hard for a new developer to take that demo and look at how it was built and understand it. So we're going to radically simplify it um, to provide a better experience to developers. Um, we're looking at generating automatically generating documentation from Composer model files. So if you start describing assets and participants and transactions, wouldn't it be nice if you could use that information to generate some documentation you could give to a business person or a developer to understand what's in the model files and what the different properties mean? Um, I mentioned before about business network cards. Um, currently, you can only store them on the file system uh, of the system running Composer, whether that's using the APIs or the command line or any of the other Composer tools. Um, we have this fancy sounding feature called Cloud Wallets, but what it really means is you can store your business network cards anywhere. We're introducing a plugin mechanism that will allow you to store your business network cards in S3 or Mongo database or um, just even a different uh, file system directory than our default. So that would be quite good. And that, that's something we've seen quite a lot from our users where they really struggle to maintain all of these different uh, directories of business network cards across multiple systems. Um, one of the uh, <coughs> pieces of feedback we've had a lot um, with people using Composer who are familiar with Fabric is that they have never been able to drop into the underlying Fabric APIs, which they need to do. Um, if we haven't wrapped some of that functionality in one of our higher levels of abstraction. Um, so what we're doing is just exposing the underlying Fabric API to Composer transaction processor functions. Um, and just to go back to Vipin's earlier question, we're doing that in a way where it, it doesn't introduce a dependency on Fabric again. Um, it's, it's done in a way where other DLTs could plug in their own underlying APIs and have them exposed to transaction processor functions. 
but use, use of that feature would make your Composer Business Networks non-portable. Um, and finally, we had some experimental code go in last year that allowed a uh, trans Composer transaction to call out to an external REST service. Um, but it was pretty limited in that it only allowed you to do HTTP posts, which was great for the demo that was done, but not so great for all of the people trying to go to external data sources and do gets and and things. So um, we're gonna we're gonna close that off by putting in a standard HTTP client instead. And then there's some um, other pieces that are not really massively important to end users, but are important to us. So we're looking. Um, to work with the Hyperledger CI team to move our builds to Jenkins from Travis. And we're interested in doing this because it will provide us a much wider range of platform support. One of the things we get asked for on a regular basis is Windows support. Um, and until we do any kind of testing or CI on Windows, then we can't really claim support. Um, so that would be good to get done. Um, we're doing some work around automated performance testing and generation of performance reports. Um, and finally, we're working on a data collection tool that will allow the contributor team to ask end users to run a simple command, and it'll package up uh, all the logs and version information and things that make it easier to diagnose issues. Um, for example, we're seeing a lot of, I'd say quite a lot of our issues that we see are due to misconfigured environments, and it'd be good to just quickly gather that information so we, we can check and see, oh, you've got the wrong node version, or you haven't installed this version of Composer, or um, I don't know, you've got the wrong business network name somewhere. So, so that, that covers all the work we're currently looking at. Um, are there any questions on that? Okay, uh, maintainer diversity, we haven't added any new maintainers. Um, it's me and Caroline in IBM and Dan in Claws. Um, and I've got the list of contributors there. Um, a few new ones. I couldn't track down the, uh, the unknowns to a particular company, um, whether they're individuals or acting on behalf of an organization that I can easily identify from their GitHub page. Don't know, so, so that's sort of it. <clears throat> All right. Any more questions for Simon? Comments from the peanut gallery? If not, thank you, Simon. No worries. And, uh, looks like everybody gets uh, about 34 minutes back, um, unless there's any other agenda items. Dave, actually, I just, uh, <laughs> you weighed in. Where, where do we stand with the Jira consultant? I, uh, I've been traveling, so i still catching up. Dave Pusby? Are you on mute? Oh. Yes, I was in mute, sorry. <laughs> I'm here, what's up? I was just I was asking the, the Jira consultant uh, update. Where, where things stand, because I've been traveling, so I haven't been able to. Oh, yeah, catch. you know what, honestly, so have I. This is my first day back this week, so um, okay. I can, I'll email you as soon as I have an update. But um, okay. yeah, that's first on my list for this morning, actually. Okay. Um, I, I'm guessing that the statement of work will be uh, approved. I think that's the next step, is to just go over those details and then put it out for, um, for signing. Okay. Thanks. Any other items? If not, we'll see many of you next week, hopefully, and um, have a good weekend. Cheers. <laughs>